नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू आई एम योर फ्रेंड राहुल साईगांवकर द एजेंडा फॉर टूडेज डिस्कशन इज कनेक्टेड टू वर्ल्ड बैंक एंड रिफॉर्म्स दर आर नीडेड इन इट वेन एवर वी डिस्कस अबाउट ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन लाइक द ब्रिटेन वुड्स इंस्टीट्यूशन आई एम एफ एंड वर्ल्ड बैंक इंटरनेशनल मोनिटरी फंड एंड द वर्ल्ड बैंक ग्रुप वी ऑलवेज टॉक अबाउट द ग्लोबल ऑर्डर डिविजन बिटवीन नॉर्थ एंड साउथ द डिस्कशन ऑफ डेवलप्ड नेशन वर्सेज डेवलपिंग एंड द लीस्ट डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज and we know that in these global financial institutions there is a sway towards the western nations or these institutions are more eurocentric in terms of membership in terms of the voting quotas in terms of the policy making and in terms of ultimate decision making that means we know that there are fundamental structural and functional reforms that are needed in these institutions in this discussion we are not going to go into those fundamental or structural reforms we are going to discuss specifically about one world bank's arm that is the international financial corporation and how reforms are needed in working of ifc why are we discussing this because recently a paper was published which has highlighted that the projects that are funded by world bank groups private sector arm that is ifc international finance corporation it is fueling violent conflict wherever investment has gone and perhaps it is time to reform the working of the ifc or the funding mechanism at the global level now you will be thinking sir how can i use this information for my upsc civil services preparation i wouldn't expect a stand alone question on ifc but whenever there is a question regarding reforms at the global financial institutions you can always use this information to suggest change that the global funding mechanism it should become more and more sustainable it should become such that the funding it must not lead to more conflicts in the areas where funding has gone now you do understand world bank it funds a lot of projects in the third world countries predominantly in the african continent in other areas in the world as well so whenever that investment goes that investment is leading first to protest and multiple conflicts as well in this discussion we are going to understand the research at the latter half of the discussion we are going to focus on india as well because we are more concerned about what is happening in india is the ifc funding in india also leading to some sort of protest we know that it has not led to any violent conflict but has it created certain problems we'll understand those things as well that is going to be the complete agenda of today's discussion to get to know this information stay with me till the very end all right let's begin but before that remember today is the last day of discounts now this particular price will fall down drastically you will get heavy discounts if you use the code rahul life to choose the p2i program our p2i program is in three format it's available in hindi it's available in english it's available in a bilingual format english the english batch is starting very very soon the classes will run at 6 pm this is the most comprehensive batch for upsc civil services preparation do enroll i'll see you in the class all right remember today is the last day to avail diwali discounts right let's begin as i told you our discussion is about world bank now when we talk about world bank remember world bank would be a misnomer we can call it, call it as a world bank grouping world bank as an institution it is a part of bretton woods conference itself out of the bretton woods conference in 1944 two institutions came up one was the imf international monetary fund the second one was the ibrd international bank for development and reconstruction reconstruction and development it came in 1944 however over a period of time in the last 60 to 70 years world bank has become like a cooperative where different countries they come together these member countries they are represented by the board of governors and these governors are basically the finance minister or the minister of development from respective countries there is a an annual meeting which goes on for world bank and its decision making and as i told you at at the fundamental level there are changes needed because these institutions are predominantly eurocentric now if you ask a question who has been the head of imf or who has been the head of world bank groupings in the last 60 to 70 years you will find many european names you will find many western names so representation to other countries is missing as i told you we are not going to get into the discussions of quota or what structural changes are needed but we are going to discuss specifically about one institution that is ifc now when we talk about world bank grouping please remember 
a simple mcq can be created asking you which of the following is a part of world bank group at first it began in 1944 as ibrd international bank for reconstruction and development initially it was brought mainly for reconstruction and development in the european region because of the second world war there was a lot of catastrophe a lot of destruction so development of that area the ibrd was brought but later on its mandate changed i would say since 1960s it has been working specifically on poverty reduction in the entire world later on the ifc came the ifc was the second wing which came in 1956 now we'll talk about this this is specifically for private sector investments in respective countries apart from this the other members or the other world bank group institutions include ida international development association it came in 1960 now the mandate of this is economic development it provides cheap loans to countries okay it provides cheaper loan to countries and then in 1988 miga came up multilateral investment guarantee agency now this was brought predominantly to push the fdi throughout the world now you do understand in 1970s and 80s the forces of globalization were at peak in the 21st century beginning as well so one country was investing money in another country so investment guarantees are needed which are provided by miga and in 1966 the icc was set up international center for settlement of investment disputes all right please remember india is a member of all these four setups india is a member of ibrd india is a member of ida india is a member of ifc india is also a member of miga but india is not a member of icc all right india does not accept the dispute settlement mechanism of world bank now many private sector or private institutions from india they suggest that the arbitration rules of the icc they do not help india a lot that's why india has not become a member of this although in the last couple of years there has been a lot of talk that india might become a member of icc but keep an eye on that all right so this is the setup of world bank under which we are going to talk about ifc and as i told you ifc what is ifc it is a member of the world bank group institutions which predominantly focuses on private sector exclusive private sector investment and if you look at their mission they suggest that from ifc we give funding to private companies private institutions in different countries right this ifc gives money as loan to private entities in a country for example if i have a company in india i can apply for ifc loan ifc can give me the the loan because ifc also wants to earn money all right so it's basically that capitalist model so they want to promote private sector for global good remember the investments they go towards green growth now this is what they suggest in their mission they also highlight their investment it must lead to inclusive jobs and impactful projects however if we closely look at how ifc is giving funding or what it is what it is doing there is there is a question mark that is what is the, the agenda of today's discussion the question is to what extent the private investment from world bank or i can say ifc when i say private investment it goes through ifc only they are helping in achieving sustainable development goals so we talk about sustainability we talk about green growth clean energy inclusive growth gender equality are all these things being achieved through ifc project a recent publication a recent publication has highlighted something different a paper was published international financial cooperation projects and increased armed conflict so what they have done is they have connected ifc projects and armed conflict in different regions they have assessed more than 7000 projects in different areas around the world the paper has been published by brian ganson and spencer and vitol hennis and this paper it highlights that it highlights that there has been increased armed conflict wherever ifc has invested ifc has invested of course now you do understand am i suggesting that international financial cooperation should not fund projects in these areas no see first of all wherever there is money involved different parties because you are funding private institutions private investment is going so people would like to take benefit out of that you need to understand i am not telling that ifc should stop funding but a better mechanism is needed so that these conflict should not rise now conflict between the parties yes conflict because of environmental concerns as well there are so many examples more than 7000 projects have been assessed in different areas and 
the adverse impact is seen predominantly on the African continent. One of the prime example being Ugandan government itself. Ugandan government it running a, a terror campaign to suppress people who are protesting against these projects. Why? Because IFC was funding one of the corporations, the Salala Rubber Corporation. Again, uh, they were they were the partners, IFC partners. Now you do understand how IFC funds. For example, IFC will give funding to a private company and this private company will invest in the home country or the host country and this private country mostly would be from the host country itself. Now the question is, you take the money, what are you doing with that money in the host country? Are you, are you throwing away the local people from there? Are you rehabilitating them? Are you maintaining the environmental standards? Are you maintaining your uh, social accountability, your corporate accountability, your environmental accountability, these things are not checked, right? That is the issue, that is the problem. Now, you are more concerned about India. Now, let's talk about India. Sir, have there been, have there been any armed conflicts, armed conflicts because of, uh, say, IFC funding? I would say largely no. Yes, there are some projects which are predominantly, say, in the in the left-wing extremism zones, there have been some issues, but IFC has been funding India since 1958. Since 1958, the funding up to a tune of 15 billion dollars has come into India. And IFC has given funding to many, many companies. For example, it has given uh, funding to Kane India, it has given funding to Kane, right? Ultimately, uh, Kane and the government of India, a case, arbitration case is also known. Apart from that, IDFC has been given funding. Jet Airways, now Jet Airways has been given funding. I wouldn't call it a green company though. There are many examples, Bharati, Power Grid, Green Infrastructure, Technowind, Bandhan Bank. Bandhan Bank has been given funding. One more player in 2021 which was given a lot of funding was Federal Bank. Now which, which came into a lot of question. Why? Because IFC says that we want private sector led growth which would be more sustainable. Now the question is, is private sector using the IFC money for sustainability, for environmental preservation? That's the question. And there are many question marks over these. You can see there are many reports which have come up. World Bank still bank, backs coal in Asia. So what has happened is IFC money is used that is pumped into coal industry in Asia, in India as well. I gave you example of Federal Bank. Now Federal Bank, it received huge amount of funding. Federal Bank in India is a, is a Kerala a based bank which received a lot of funding from IFC in 2021. Now it had huge stakes in many coal based companies for example in JSW energy in different coal companies they had a lot of stakes so indirectly IFC is funding coal in developing countries the world bank group it also fails to give remedies to project abusers now this is not just india but anywhere you talk about this if there are abusers if people are being thrown out from their own host area or or their own area are they being rehabilitated Nothing is seen. Is environmental impact assessment carried out? Are environmental standards maintained? There is no accountability. Now, that is what has been highlighted by Inclusive, Devo Inclusive Development uh, International as well. It says that coal financing is flowing through the loopholes of IFC's Paris alignment because IFC has come up with the green equity strategy. That means they are going to fund only companies who are, who are going to be more sustainable. But at the ground level, this is not happening. In fact, one of the prime examples in India, which led to, I wouldn't say an armed conflict, but a lot of protest was the Mundra port in Gujarat. Funding from IFC came in Gujarat to the Mundra port and many fishermen, many fishermen protested it, right? Many fishermen protested it and ultimately this was even challenged. The IFC funding was challenged in a US district court. Of course, when you challenge that IFC is funding these projects, IFC simply says, I am not responsible. I cannot be held accountable. Why? Because International Financial Corporation, it claims absolute immunity. It claims absolute immunity. I am not doing anything. I am simply paying money to private sector. So I have complete immunity. I don't have any responsibility or accountability what is happening in the host country. And that has been criticized heavily. The IFC policy, whenever there is a harm which is caused by their project, it has been lambasted by many environmental activities as a let down. World Bank, which talks about poverty eradication, which talks about development of the least developed countries, which talks about sustainability, which partners with United Nations 
environmental program united nations development program to achieve sustainable development goals and on the other side they are funding many private entities private companies who are indulged in non green practices now that is why even united nations secretary general antonio guterres in february 2023 itself he called that what we need is a transformation of a global financial system to tackle pressing global challenges wherever the funding is coming that funding has to be attached with the concerns for environment with the concerns for green energy and to some extent you can say this is happening as as i told you ifc the international finance corporation it it was or it is right now funding so many institutions in india it, it has invested money in many private companies now to be more precise it has actually pumped in more than 5 billion dollars in 88 financial institutions in india and in 2023 beginning itself the international financial corporation it has said that india is a big big opportunity for everybody it is an opportunity for us as well and from now on there would be 2 to 3 billion dollars investment every year in india can you imagine this since 1958 till 2022 15 billion dollars have been invested and ifc is telling that we are going to invest more and more in india now because india is an opportunity and that's why the money which comes from these financial institutions it should come with the accountability clauses it should come with those clauses where people are not harmed human right abuse does not take place and environmental protection is maintained that means ultimately what we need is true or real sustainability and for this what can be done see first of all i am not telling we don't want this investment we want this investment india is an opportunity and we have created that opportunity for ourselves right we have created the attract attractiveness for ourselves so what we are telling is fine you invest no issues but what we need is more accountability you invest in such companies which have good corporate standards which have environmental and social accountability so for that some measures can be brought for instance specialized intermediaries can be created wherever ifc is funding in a sensitive area specialized intermediaries can be brought to to men, to ensure accountability and responsibility independent local oversight committees can be brought right the local people must be empowered they should directly give inputs to the ifc so that if there are any human rights abuses if there are any issues to environment at the local level it should directly be connected so local empowered committees can can be created whenever investment goes into private company that private company must come up with comprehensive analysis if there is any risk risk mitigation plan has to be brought continuous monitoring and evaluation of development project and development impact has to be studied if at all there is there are any problems say for example if a private company is cutting a forest so we have campa compensatory afforestation can be brought that means that that the idea of eia environmental impact assessment and social impact assessment they have to be strictly adhered to apart from that what is needed is proactive conflict management plans especially uh, not just in india but in african countries i would say whenever investment is going on if the conflict is anticipated then conflict management plans are also needed from the ifc apart from that compulsory rehabilitation and redressal of grievances is something which is a sine qua non without this without this we cannot expect inclusive growth and we cannot expect expect sustainable development so some of these ideas must be incorporated or must be attached with the money that comes with international finance corporation that's the basic idea right in fact this this issue has been going on for almost a decade now there have been multiple studies studies by human rights watch there have been multiple studies by uh, international inclusive development institutions which have highlighted that ifc projects yes money is needed those projects are needed to eradicate poverty to to go for development but that development such such should not come at adverse costs that's the ultimate conclusion out of this discussion all right so let's hope that these changes come in ifc and as i told you yes we would love the investment but that investment must be attached to clauses of sustainability very very strictly that's the ultimate conclusion all right so 
that's the ending of our discussion i hope you have found out this fruitful and interesting i'll see you in the next session thank you for watching this jai hind